Hi, I'm Graham from Second Era of Moles, and if you've clicked on this video accidentally, 90 seconds is all I ever ask. Welcome back to another week that was on Pokemon Masters X. This week it's been a bit more busy, we've had the Champion Stadium again, and we've been able to unlock Master Mode. We've had Frightal Fights, the new Halloween event from last year, we've had Ho-Oh return in his event with Silver, and we've had the Midnight Spook Vest event going on still. We've had the Battle Villa reopen, so let's see how we unlock Masters Mode, shall we? So for Hard Mode, to unlock Masters Mode, all I needed was a Fighting Type, a Rock Type, and a Ghost Type. So I'm going to go through this one reasonably quickly, and then the detail will come when we unlock Masters Mode. In Round 1, I took on Acerola, and my team was Morty and Driftblim, Brock and Onyx, and Brawly and Hariyama. So this one's about setting up Morty for his big sync move, Brock is using Rock Hard Determination, Brawl is using Rock Smash to lower that defense. Uh, Acerola gets some healing after her sync move. Thankfully if you're using Phantom Presence over the two turns that does enough damage to cancel that out and you should get past Acerola quite easily. In round two I took on Moulin with Leon, Phoebe and Roxanne with Probo Pass. You'll see that although I got the three of them in the first round, I carried on using them as much as possible through the rest of it because you see stories of people who forgot one of their types and I'm like, don't want that to be me. So with Leon, you're using Inferno to get that burn damage on and then you're just setting him up for as many sync moves as you need. You've got your two supports who are going to be boosting his stats as well and that one shouldn't cause you too much trouble. In round three, I took on Olivia with Acerola, Kukui, and Cynthia and Garchomp. Again, you're setting up Cynthia for her sync move. You're using Sandstorm and Astonish with Acerola. Kukui's doing Leer to lower that defense. And then once you've used that sync move, it's just Earthquake, more Astonish, more Leer. Maybe a bit of Accelerock to take down Olivia, my queen of rocks. In round four, I took on Kahili with Mewtwo, Marshall, and Medicham, and this one you're just unleashing Mewtwo on them and make Kahili regret ever stepping up to the tee. Gonna be using a lot of golf tricks with Kahili. And then how is the champion this week? So he's with two bug types. I used Feromosa, Viola, and Morsi and Miss Magus, which I don't think I've used very much so far. So this one takes a bit more patience. Viola's doing trap, Feromosa is using attacks as your main striker. I was going for positive reinforcement, so I took out one side then the other to boost those stats. Uh, Miss Magus is just trying to protect Feromosa as much as possible. And it takes a few rounds to get through this one, so you're gonna need a bit of patience, but it should all come good in the end. And with that, you should have all 18 types. Your, your medal comes together quite nicely. Maybe I put it this side, probably this side. And then you can reset and do it again on Masters mode. So I don't know about you, but after a week off of Masters mode, I was ready to test myself again. So in round one, you get a sync move countdown reduction. I took on Kahili, who was weak to psychic types. I almost said Phykic types. What the hell is that? What's a Phykic? And the team I used was Mewtwo, Bianca and Mushana, and Sabrina and Alakazam. I think that's a pretty well-rounded all Psychic teams because you got a bit of everything. You're starting off with Psychic Terrain and then you snooze you lose with Bianca. You're using Nowhere to Hide with Mewtwo. Sabrina's using a direct hit plus and then Psybeam as well just to keep that move gauge going. That first sync move comes and it goes to Sabrina as 6x, that is her remit to get that first sync move. After that you're using Shadow Ball with Mewtwo. You could use Psychic as well, it kind of depends how you've got your grid set up for him and what you're trying to achieve with that. You're using more, you snooze you lose with Bianca until you run out and then you're starting to use stored power. With Sabrina, I used a Sixth Sense on Mewtwo to raise that special attack so he's doing more damage. And then because of Kahili's sync move, I used one on Sabrina to heal her up a bit as well. Not sure if I had the move gauge to use Reflex, 
but just be aware of that, that you might not be able to use Stored Power, Shadow Ball, Reflect all in one turn. Remember to reset that Psychic Terrain before Mewtwo's Sync move. Sometimes I forget, I'm like, ah. But then you do that, you sync with Mewtwo and he becomes Mega Mewtwo Y for that Mega Evolution. For me, his sync move took out Crobat in the middle, one of the gold bats, and then the other gold bat had like that much health. And then it decided to use a Heat Wave, which took out Mewtwo, which was very irritating. But thankfully, Mushana saw that and was like, hey! Here's my stored power revenge. In round two, you get a status conditions boost. I took on Molain again for this one with a fire type team of Leon and Charizard, Blaine and Rapidash, and that new girl and Entai. I can't remember what her name is. I thought it would be a good chance to show off what she can do in the champion stadium. I haven't used her there yet, but now she's sort of kind of leveled up, time to go. You're starting off with an Inferno for that burn damage and then strike a pose with Leon to get you down to that sync move. Entai is using that trainer move that boosts defense and then regen all. Blaine is making sure to set Sunny Day at some point and then using trainer moves or maybe inflicting trap. When that sync move comes, obviously it goes to Leon, you're not gonna give it to anyone else. He hits a very, very hard, especially with that burn damage. Make sure you leave status conditions on. Don't pick that as one of your points options. And yeah, huge, huge hits. So left uh, Metagross with not very much health left. You do a few more Infernos and that's gonna take him out. You get basically a free one after Leon's sync move because it recharges the move gauge. And then it's just keep on raising that temperature, burning the roof with that Inferno, your two sides should go down. I didn't even need a second sync move for it. In round three, your condition is don't let any of your sync pairs faint. I took on Olivia with this one with Cynthia and Garchomp, Maxi and Groudon, and Blue and Blastoise. Blue and Blastoise is always a good one for this one because of the team endurance. Now, some rounds they require lots of planning, some rounds require balance, some require you to be defensive, some require a bit of cunning, a bit of creativity, and some rounds like this one just require you to have two big heavy hitters go absolutely to town on everyone. <laughs> so you start off with Groudon using Precipice Blades. I always want to say Precipitous Blades, but that has to do with rain, so if I do say that, then please forgive me. Garchomp is raising its own stats, its attack, and its crit hit. Blue and Blastoise are raising everyone's defense and using to the top as well. You want to make sure that that move gauge keeps getting refilled because if you're using Precipice Blades, that's a four bar move. You get down to that first sync move, and of course it's going to go to Blue for that 6x boost and also for that endurance. After your sync move, you're going to be carrying on with Precipice Blades as much as you can. Uh, if you've got any trainer moves left over for Cynthia, make sure to use those up and then you start on Earthquake. With those two moves hitting everyone, your sides are going to be not hanging around for very long. With Blue, you're making sure you're using to the top to make sure that move gauges keep refilling, as I said before. When you get down to that second sync move, that's going to go to Cynthia because I have her at 6x, so it makes sense. And then she gets Mega Garchomp as well. Because you've raised the defense of your team with blue, when Olivia's sync move comes, it's not going to hit you very hard. So you're just getting your two big ground types and you're hitting her as much as you can. Just uh, mushing her face into the ground <laughs> because they're ground types. Ah, oh, I'm so good at jokes. In round four, you get a special attack boost. I had Acerola as the final member of the Elite Four here, so I took her on with a team of Anniversary, Lily and Lunala, uh, Phoebe and Dusclops, and Drake and Salamence. I finally managed to upgrade Phoebe to 6x this week. I was monitoring after I'd finished every round. It's like, do I have enough tickets? No. Do I? Oh, and then I had before this one. I was like, yes, here we go. Phoebe, it's your time to shine. So you start off using Shining Moonlight with Lily to boost all of her key stats. 
your raising crit hit with Phoebe, maybe a shadow punch in there if you're feeling it, your raising special defense with Drake, and then maybe a hub to starboard to make sure that move gauge keeps going, especially if you're going to be using Moongeist beam with Lunala, that's a four bar move and that's going to take up a significant chunk of it. And because she's now 6x, that first sync move goes to Phoebe. I really hope she enjoyed it. Then in the second phase, you're attacking non-stop with Moongeist Beam. You need to make sure that move gauge keeps getting refreshed. Thankfully, you have Unbreakable Bonds with Phoebe to do that. You also have Hard to Starboard with Drake to do that as well. And yeah, it's just keep attacking with that big Cave Bat Moon Bat. Make sure that you use a weaker move on Mimic You first, like last time it's got Disguise so it's going to nullify that first hit, so you don't want to waste a Moongeist Beam there. Um, I think that I finished off the other side with the second sync move, and so yeah, Anniversary Lily, you go girl. And then you come to the Champion round, it's how this week, as it was on Hard Mode, his permanent condition is a physical attack reduction. I went with the optional one of a sync move countdown because the team I went for was Feromosa, Leaf and Eevee and Xerneas and Sycamore. So Eevee and Sycamore both get stats boost from their sync move so you want to get that in play as soon as possible. How was weak to bug types which is why Feromosa is in there. This was definitely the hardest round of the week. How can hit you pretty hard, his discharge can also cause paralysis which can be very annoying if you're stopped from attacking, but that's the way it should be, you know, you shouldn't just be able to rock in to the champion and just flick him away and be like, I'm the champion now. And that's one of the things I like about the champion stadium as well, it's not always easy, sometimes you have to rethink your strategy a bit, you have to try something else, you have to swap in a unit, you have to look at the points that you're using, you have to, against the champion, think maybe I'll use a different previous condition, you know? It's testing yourself. When you get into the battle, you're starting off with a tackle from EV, you're using there there with Lusamine and then Bug Buzz as well, Xerneas is going to be using a couple of Dazzling Gleams, you only need five moves to get down to that first sync move, and that goes to Xerneas and Sycamore. I started off trying to take out one of the sides to get that positive reinforcement, but then I thought, you know what, because of the physical attack reduction at the start, you're going to be using Bug Buzz, which is a special attack. You get a six boost on that from Xerneas' sync move anyway, so that means that you can just concentrate on how and take him down first. So after that sync move, Pheromos is get back, getting back on the bug buzz, Eevee's using Tackle again, Xerneas is using Horn Leech. Uh, Hal might use a Dazzling Gleam or a Disarming Voice, I can't remember which one it is, and that'll do damage to everyone. If he does that, you want to make sure that you put a potion onto Pheromosa before Hal uses his sync move. She's very glassy, if she's taken any sort of damage through the battle, she probably won't survive that sync move. So just keep an eye on that with Eevee and with her potions. You can use a World is Fast as well to get a little bit of casual healing, that's going to be helpful when Feromosa gets low on health as well. And then when that second sync move comes, that's going to go to Eevee. Keep attacking with Feromosa get down to that third sync move and it goes to Pheromosa, she's going to do a fair chunk of damage to Hal, and then when you've taken Hal down, which you should do reasonably soon after that, the two sides are going to be quite an easy cleanup job. They're going to be using attacks that only hit one opponent at a time. When you've got Xerneas using his Horn Leech, Eevee with potions, and a bit of tackle and flinch damage going on there, there's not too much that's going to worry you. And that's our first 7,500 point run for Alola. Doesn't it feel good? Doesn't everyone want to get laid? Like a lay with necklace. Yes, yeah, a joke. And we'll be back on it next week to try and earn another 7,500 points from the Champion Stadium. Feels good when you do it. 
We've got another rerun of the Pure Hearts and Rainbow Wings, which is the Ho-Oh and Silver event. I was very, very surprised for this one that it didn't give you the opportunity to move Silver and Ho-Oh up to 6x. That really feels like a missed opportunity, because if you're doing that with your legendary Pokémon, why would you do an event where you don't do it and then have to do it later on? It just doesn't make all that much sense to me and it feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. But you've got your rewards in there, you can unlock Ho-Oh and raise it up to um, 20 out of 20. We've also got the return of the Fight or Fright event, that's last year's Halloween event and it's based around Acerola and her Mimikyu and then Hilbert and Mighty Ina. I like the story of it, it's good to replay it as well. There's a full force battle to go along with it, there aren't any additional conditions to it, you just have to do it with less than sync, six sync pairs fainting. So I took it on in the first round with Sawyer, Morty and Skylar and Swanna. I managed to do it with just those three but it was a bit of a challenge. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to learn from it and I swapped out Sawyer for Misty and Psyduck. And the reason for that is that the Gengar that starts off is going to use Poison Gas. That Poison Gas is going to poison everyone, obviously. My Skylar has Antitoxins, so you don't have to worry about her, but you can use a full heal from Misty to take that poison away from Misty and Psyduck, and also from Morty and Driftblim. And from there, it's kind of a, a standard battle you're sinking first with Skylar for that 6x boost. She's tanking, take flight, potions. Uh, Misty is using duck and cover. That's going to give everyone a bit of casual healing. She's got potions as well. And then water gun is a one bar move that can keep that sink move countdown going. With Morty, you're using pierce the veil to boost up all of his stats. Hopefully you get refreshes and you can make his evasiveness so high that when his blind spot comes in, it hits everyone very hard. Uh, most of his sync moves are going to wipe out the sides and do a lot of damage to the middle. You'll probably have to use either a Shadow Ball or a Phantom Presence to finish them off though. But if you're worried about the poison, you can use a bit of a weaker team first to make sure you just take out that Gengar and do as much damage through the rest as possible. And then you come in with your second team and they just clean everything up. Another reason I like this event is because you get so many tickets for completing it. You get 10 each of the 1, 2, 3 and 4 stars. Not too fussed about the 1 and 2 stars, I don't really use them very much. But the 3 stars and 4 stars are helpful. The Battle Villa has now reopened. I think I'm like 4, maybe 5 weeks late on my prediction of that reopening, so... Oopsie! Just remember to do your daily co-op battles and remember that it is time limited so if you're a bit like me and you're like, I'll do it later, you got to do it at some point. I've been meaning to mention this for quite a few weeks but your daily regional battles now give you regional scout tickets. So you've had a few from Kanto, you've had some from Johto and now you've got some from Hoenn and then it'll be Sinnoh, Unova after that and so on and so forth. With the release of these regional tickets, I would have thought that the next villain event will be for a different region, maybe Johto. And see, then that would have tied quite in with Ho-Oh, because Ho-Oh is Johto, and you could have given like uh, them as a, as a reward for that and stock up on your Johto regional tickets, but that's by the by. I also think we probably should have done with another three-star gear event by now. As I said, when the ghost types came out, it's like, loads and loads of time between these and it's it almost makes you forget about them it's it's wasted and that's another week that was in the week that will be we'll be taking on Uxie who will be in the legendary arena we're going to get another egg event I think there's going to be ghost types in there but you're well past the 90 second mark at this point so thank you very much and congratulations on making it that far hopefully the tips and tricks in here have inspired you to subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter so that you get told when next week's video comes out. That's for the week that will be though. Thank you very much for watching this one and goodbye. <laughs>